guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you like the video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe for Daily Blender, Unity 3D Coding, Photoshop and all sorts of other videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, Create Your Way. So today I wanted to show you uh, how the Fresno node works and how to get more realistic lighting on certain objects. For example, I have this blanket here that is made of slightly uh, woolen material. So um, you'll notice that the light almost catches, it reflects off certain parts of the blanket, but not other parts. So I use a Fresnel node for this. Now, not a lot of people use the Fresnel node or know what it is or how it works. So um, you may have seen this before uh, in your house or whatever, where you've had a, uh, a nice fuzzy woolen blanket in the direct sunlight and you've noticed that the fibers almost catch the light if you will and they kind of highlight and turn bright white and they kind of reflect and sparkle almost so if you go into the net or no netter the note editor you can see that what i've done is i have taken a fresno node which takes an index of of refraction and I just use the stock value and I've put that factor into a mixed node which takes the color of my image texture well okay yeah you can basically ignore the hue saturation value it takes my image texture color basically just forget that so it takes the color of my image texture and it also takes this white color so the white color is what uh the fresno node uh basically uses to use as the you can see the white parts in here because i've chosen white if i choose something like bright green you'll see that that these are all the parts where the uh the fresno node is taking effect uh, and if i turn the factor way up that's exactly all the parts where they are so if i play with the index of refraction so if i go all the way to zero well the whole blanket is going to be basically uh reflected and fresnelized i'll call it you can see like that so we don't want that so if we turn it back up to you can see also if i go way up and then change it to bright green same deal about the whole thing so you need to find a good middle ground like if i wanted most of the blanket to look like it's really reflecting in the sunlight i would choose somewhere around around two and a quarter no yeah two and a quarter or so and so then if i turn this back to pure white whoops not green pure white come on there we go you can see that it looks like the sunlight is really catching the fibers of this woolly blanket which is the whole deal of the fresnel node if i turn the fresnel node off you'll see that's what it looks like normal it looks very unrealistic in the scene like blankets don't look like that when there's strong 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 sunlight coming in because this scene is uh this scene was created to look like it was taken with a real camera and under the camera settings um I guess I could quickly show you. Um, I've actually used a real camera preset for a... Ooh, I don't have it in this version of Blender since I'm using a daily build. But basically, uh, I'm using a Canon a camera preset. So it looks like it was taken with a real camera. And I won't show you the whole rendered view. That'll probably I'll run out of, out of uh, video card memory. But basically, there's an extreme amount of light coming in through the windows. So it's very realistic as if the camera was trying to focus on everything and there's so much light coming in that it basically got kind of overexposed so it looks very realistic. But if you look right here, it doesn't look very realistic. That's why we had to add in the Fresno node and that makes it look more realistic. Now it's a stock value of about 1.4 or so. Come on that's where it looks the most realistic it also doesn't have to be pure white i think it was the regular 80 percent white so yeah that's how we get that effect of it looks like the fibers are catching it um 
And so you could also do this if we took the blanket and if we added a particle system, I'm just going to call it whatever, and if we used hair, not that big, not that amount, this is really a slow blender down, but about, I don't know, maybe 75 to 100. Yeah, that'll work. Turn the length down so we can kind of fake hair on the blanket. Well, not hair, but fibers. Let me just uh, quickly, let me just quickly make it look like actual fibers. What a, yeah, close tip. Okay, cool. So let's just up the number a little bit. So now it looks like we have fibers on our blanket. Now they don't look realistic at all, but you 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 get the idea. I'm not gonna go and make it totally um, realistic. Don't have time for that. But you get the idea. So you can see now if I turn off the Fresnel node, they're all the same color. Well, they use the blender's texture, material, and everything. So they're all they all look normal and everything. But if I turn on the Fresnel node, you can see that the tips of them catch the light and they turn that bright bright white so that's what the fresnel node does because if you know what a uh, fresnel does basically is um fresnel or fresnel diffraction basically affects how the light uh passes through an object so you've seen this before in certain types of lenses you may have seen fresnel lenses and such before and how they bend the light and do certain things like that but um what you kind of need to know for how this works is the background of ray tracing and how it works so ray tracing is a computer graphics idea and it's the technique for generating an image so that's what we see here by tracing the path of light which is coming in from the windows through pixels and in an image plane so basically our hair the couch the blanket is an image plane it's a bunch of polygons and so the light is passing either through or hitting it or whatever blender is calculating that all and um so ray tracing is the idea of being able to create virtual realism because the old school method was to use a scan line rendering where you would just have a straight ray of light and it would hit something and stop and it wouldn't bounce it wouldn't go through things etc etc so the good thing about ray tracing is it allows a variety of optical effects such as reflection, scattering, dispersion, and refraction. And in this instance, the scattering and refraction is is what's really taking effect here. Now there's algorith al al algorithms and everything behind this. But yeah, I just wanted to basically show you how the Fresnel node worked. And if you have a scene where there's some fairly strong light or even basic light and you just want to make it a bit more realistic, take an object that would catch the light. For example, um, maybe, oops, sorry, if you had something like a... Uh, a phone sitting on the couch here or on the ground it probably wouldn't catch very much light so you probably wouldn't need to add a Fresnel node but something like this blanket is a perfect example because it uses it it has the idea of this um these well the the uh the threads the the fur almost, the the cottony, silky, woolen kind of look that a blanket would have. So like I said, without it, it looks very bland and flat. But when we add it back on, it looks like a real blanket. So the light catches those kind of fuzzy rays and it makes it look like a fuzzy, warm blanket. It makes your scene look more inviting. We turn off the particle system to go back to where it was. You can see that, yeah, this makes the scene a lot more inviting. Here it looks like, okay, yeah, there's a blanket draped over the couch, but it's not really lit up at all. But you turn that Fresnel node on, and bam, it's like, wow, yeah, that looks really inviting. That looks like a nice, cozy blanket that I like to curl up in. So that's just something to think about, something you can add to your scene. Just a quick tip for you. I wanted to kind of show you an example of how it works. It does work in many other instances. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you that. 
And I can show you another one very, very, very quickly if we just create a new scene. I will just add a plane. Whoops, not grading. I will add a plane. I'll scale it up. I will add a circle. I will edit mode. I will extrude it straight up and scale it. I'll extrude it. And then we're going to add a solidify modifier. And we're going to make it pretty thick. Cool, cool, cool. We're going to apply that in object mode, obviously. We're going to go smooth shading. Whoops. On this one. We're going to add an edge split modifier. Perfect. And change that to 90 de or 89 degrees. Cool. Apply. Now we're going to just simply add a new material. So, I'm actually going to use this for my uh, next tutorial on the light path nodes. So that's great. But anyways, let's open up our node editor. So, we're going to this is a glass. So, we're going to do this very quickly, but we would use, just for uh, quickness sake, we'll just use a glass shader. And we'll make the color just ever, ever so slightly blue. And you can see there's the index of refraction. So that's the Fresnel value. So we could go, at, go in and add... We could go in and add the Fresnel input directly into there because it is a factor. So, um, and that allows you some more use because now you can put some like math nodes in there or whatever. But anyway, so now if we go into rendered view, we are going to need a light source. We'll just add a area lamp. And rotate it. You try to bring it closer there's really nothing for our glass to reflect through on or from um, we can try adding maybe an icosphere for it to reflect off give it a new material just a kind of we'll make it a reddish or something so now if we go into render view, that nah, doesn't really give it anything to reflect off of. I think I made my glass too th thick. Uh, let's add a mix shader. And we'll add a this is a better way to make, not the real way, but a better way to make glass. And we'll add a transparent shader. And then we'll just change the factor to be more glass and less transparent. So you can kind of see how that's working. It kind of looks like a glass. My samples are very, very, very low. Let me turn them up. So yeah, that's my glass, and as we play with the index of refraction, if I turn it way up, you can see that it's it's really refracting light. It's that Fresnel node is causing the light to to catch certain areas and to refract and to reflect around. And if we turn it down, that has no ref refraction or reflection so it's just basic glass you can see straight through it and there's no refraction but as we start to turn it up it, it starts to distort things and catch light in different ways so you'll notice now that the edges and the bottom are catching the light differently it's distorting the icosphere behind it so it has different uses as you can see as we really crank it up it really yeah, and then it, then it really distorts it. Now we can hardly see through it at all. So for glass, that's a bit too high. So let me quickly Google uh, index of refraction glass. See what value it should be. Internet's being slow. It's an index of refraction of 1.5. So that's what 
real glass should look like. Now, obviously, this isn't a very good scene, and I probably should have uh, maybe shrink fat in this. I shouldn't have made it so thick, maybe. I mean, how, how often do you see glass that thick? Let's see if I can shrink it down. No, not really. Not without any a lot of work. But you can see now how um this plain, very thin glass looks like glass a little bit better. It's it's just barely, if at all, distorting the glass because this is very, very pure glass. One point five is stated as pure um crown glass, so it's not distorting it at all from this viewing angle. If we go from different angles it might distort it a little bit. Like if we were to go through two panes of glass, you might see some distortion. We don't have that to really use here. But um yeah, you can see how that works, and you can see how different parts of the glass, again, are catching different parts of the light. So yeah, just, like I said, something that you can throw into your scenes to make lighting more realistic, to make items more realistic, etc., etc. I'm not going to ramble on too long. That's really all there is to it. So uh, I just wanted to bring that little, not tip to you, but just wanted to kind of show you a little bit about the Fresno lens, especially when it comes to things that catch light not glass so much but yeah fibrous stuff so uh if you're making characters like said blankets anything with uh, fabric uh using a fresno node can really make it look more realistic so anyways thanks for watching from the team here at blendertech.com again that's blender t-e-k.com if you enjoyed this video and learned something please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more blender unity 3d programming photoshop and all sorts of other videos we also also now offer hard copies of our videos if you don't have a YouTube downloader. So if you'd like a copy to download on your computer to watch later or in the media play of your choice, just let us know and we'll upload it to our server for you. If you dislike this video for some reason, don't just leave and hit the thumbs down button. Instead, leave a comment or email us at info at blendertech.com about what you did not like. That way we can improve our future videos based on the community input. We also take requests for your tutorials so let us know what you want or want more of. We're also now on Twitter at Blender underscore tech. So that's twitter.com slash Blender underscore tech and Facebook at facebook.com slash Blender tech page. All one word. So uh, we'll be doing some podcasts soon. We'll be doing a live event January 6th, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on YouTube Live. So anyways, see you next time. Remember, create your way.